Welcome to the Startup Grind. And, uh, thanks for coming. Come on. Here we go. Thank you very much, sir. All right, that's pretty good. Um, I'm, I'm not Steve Jobs or Elon Musk, but I want to be. All right. That's why we're here, right? That's right. Yeah. All right. Everyone good? Everyone can hear okay? Right in the back there, TK? That's why TK in the back is the cameraman and he's very tired. He just had a little baby. Congrats. Yeah. So I just had a baby about three months ago. So I was telling him the other day, so that when we had Lonely Planet here, people don't know because they're looking at him. But I was about to fall asleep. <laughs> I, was about to fall, I, was about, I was worried. I was literally worried I was going to fall backwards off the chair. Anyway. Congrats. Thank it's you. A, it's an awesome experience, man. It is. Life changer. <laughs> um, so let's go back. I want to know um, uh, what was your education? What, what was the first? What was the first thing that you know gave you this entrepreneurial bug? Uh, sure. I, I wouldn't say it's the traditional education as you know it. Um, I like to see a opportunity and have a solution to that problem. So. Uh, back when I was a kid, everybody wanted to read comic books and um, I had a little comic book business where I bought everybody's comic books and sold it back to them for a lot you know, more money than they paid for. So buy low, sell high. What are we talking about? Like eight years old at this point or something? Seven actually. Yeah. <laughs> but um, it was in communist China and it was really difficult for business and all the parents came to my house and uh, tried to kick the door down. It didn't really work out. But <laughs> It was really cool, and um, that gave me um, a lot of satisfaction in terms of running a business, and um, and uh, that's where I am today. This sounds like a pretty big business. People coming around there. Okay. Money. Okay. Okay. One parent. One parent. One oh. parent. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Fair enough. So, uh, was that from like your your parents? Was your dad like an entrepreneur, or what? Just just came naturally, or what? Uh, yeah. Um, my mom did a lot of business, and uh, like I'm, I'm from Shanghai originally. I'm Chinese, as you probably gathered. Um, in Shanghai, woman actually runs the family a lot. So uh, dads are typically at home cooking the kitchen, uh, you know, looking after the kids, uh, doing the housework, and woman typically goes out and you know make the money and do business and things like that. So my mom was quite a bit of a, a businesswoman. I didn't know that. Yeah. All right. So, so some families. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So you. Okay, so when did you come to Australia, and uh, what was your education? Yeah. So I come to Australia in 1992. So I've been here for 21 years. I'm a. Um, I, I will call myself an Australian, and uh, I have a uh, bachelor's of uh, computer science from University of Melbourne. But education never stops, right? We learn new things every day. Uh, today we're looking at how to uh, be VPay compliant, which is a uh, video advertising technology, every day we new, learn new things. And I think, you know, as an engineer, I call myself an engineer, we have to keep on learning to um, have that advantage to be able to innovate and do cool things. Well, I just want to go back because it reminded me, the first time I met Roy, you probably won't remember this. I do. Uh, you do? Yeah. <laughs> I so, like your hat back then. You know? I had a hat? Yeah. It's yeah, really right cool. Uh, but Roy was an in, in interesting guy because I always tell his story because you kind of like, it was like a double date, because he said, Roy said, come along, you know, meet me and we'll talk about, you know, I'll help you out with the startup problems and all that. But when I got there, there was another guy there as well. Right. Remember, you had like two guys, like, he was like, he was trying to get government funding from yeah. one guy over here while he was helping me with the advice. Yeah, I like to uh, kill two birds with one stone. Um, I used to go to the gym, but I found that was a waste of time because you know I, I couldn't accomplish a lot where I was you know trying to press bench as you can see you know I'm a big guy now. Uh, but I, I took up cycling as I was saying to Sue um, and uh, it's a fantastic way to be able to listen to a podcast at the same time travel to work you know um, and get really fit at the same time so it's kind of like through birds with one stone but um, you know if, if it, uh, I hope I wouldn't get run over by a car you know, but no 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 so yeah. you, it's, it's like almost like a way of Oh, obviously being more efficient and that's how you run your business? Um, do you look for, do you, do you look, go out of your way to look for ways to be more efficient like that? 
So, as I was saying before, um, I'm an engineer. We, uh, as one of the uh, fundamental beliefs that I have is uh, to improve efficiency. So, we constantly look for ways to do things better, to uh, implement processes and technologies to do things you know, better. Uh, but I think an important skill for an entrepreneur is to have the ability to focus to be able to concentrate on that one task, to have your alone time, whether if it's, you know, uh, have your headphones on or, you know, have, uh, turn your phone off and to be able to focus on something and uh, try to solve it. Yeah, uh, I mean, I have that problem all the time. I always, uh, yeah, never finish one thing before I'm starting something else. But anyway, yeah. So you, you got this education here in Australia. When, when did you start your own business? Did you go, you know, go the typical corporate road before you got sick of that? And when did the uh, when did you start your own stuff? Yeah, um, interesting story. Um, my my dad is a um, quite traditional and abstract. So advice that he would give me as a kid would be, uh, you should do good at school, you should get good grades. And I, I, I after hearing him say that, I've become more really excited, and and I I think you know I should do really good at school. I should get good grades. But uh, you know, a couple of hours later, I'm like, how do I do that, right? So I go back to my dad and go, you know, how do I get good grades? How do I get uh, do good school? He says, you should have more time. You, you should you know, put more effort in and stuff like that. So really abstract you know, ideas. So um, uh, yeah, so uh, to, to have the ability to, I guess, um, to understand um, Sorry, what was the question? <laughs> uh, if, if I'm incoherent or struggling for words, it's probably because I haven't had enough to drink. That's right. You know, it's not because wanna, English is my second language. You, you want a beer or something? Uh, I'm okay. I'm okay. just joking. Sure. No, no. So, how did you get started in your first business and did you start on the corporate path? Yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry. Um, That's all right. <laughs> I always wanted to be a comedian, so this is probably as good as it comes, you know. <laughs> Uh, I'm not funny at all, so it's good to see you know people actually paying to hear me talk rubbish. So um, I, I follow the traditional path as my dad set out uh, that I should. You know, uh, have a good education, uh, do good in school, uh, get into a big corporate. So I uh, worked for Telstra indirectly via Infosys, which was a, a huge software company that employs tens of thousands of people around the world, hundreds of thousands of people around the world. Um, to uh, so, so I worked in Telstra for five years, and uh, I think it's a, such a valuable in, experience for me because I got to do a lot of things that I wouldn't have done otherwise. I worked in all these different aspects of the business, whether if it's in development, in testing, in uh, uh, in management, in leading offshore teams, working with all kinds of different uh, people. And um, if I left uni to pursue uh, my own uh, business at the time, uh, it, I wouldn't have the same experiences. Now I'm really confident in having this ability to go to a large business and talk the same language and being able to write the emails in the same tone and it's because I've had those years at Telstra. So I'm kind of great, grateful for it, but at the same time, don't tell anyone, I don't know who's watching, maybe like, you know, I don't know if this thing's going to go on the internet or not, you know, but... Um, <laughs> don't, we'll cut it, we'll cut it out. <laughs> um, so uh, larger businesses are quite inefficient businesses and uh, when I was uh, having a day job, uh, I was sort of doing something on the side and uh, long story short, I was spending a lot of time working on my own business while I was in a larger business. So uh, that's uh, where it all started, you know. Uh, the things I was doing on the side was more interesting, more profitable, and created more uh, retention than, and more value than what I was doing at my day job. So I think it's like a question that kind of comes up with you know uh, people that talk to me or at these networking events about you know when is that time to take the leap I guess into the entrepreneurial world. It sounds like you had a pretty clear cut scenario where you're already making more money. You said while you're at work with your other, with your side job, so it would be like oh it's time to move across, right? Well, I, I think that's a good way to do it. Uh, but um, I took a mortgage just be just before I did that. So when you have a mortgage, um, you know, when you have your bank, we have to explain to your bank manager that you've quit your day job and you're going to pursue something so out there. Uh, this was back in 2006. 
Um, and uh, Facebook wasn't around, Google was really ugly, um, and uh, it, it, we didn't have the whole you know, web that we see today. So, um, they thought you were nuts. Yeah, yeah, like how are you going to pay back your mortgage? You know, all, all these uh, really challenging questions. And I asked myself, how, do I'm going to, how am I going to pay back my mortgage? So, uh, yeah, it was a bit of a leap of faith. I'm guessing that your, you know, your wife and stuff was very supportive or yeah. you need that support at home. So I, I encourage her to stay at work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very supportive that way. <laughs> Um, but I, I think it's important to, like, uh, I'm sure as an entrepreneur you listen to a lot of advice from various people to uh, tell you to be focused, to, you know, challenge big problems, to, you know, do all kinds of, you know, uh, things that takes you to be an entrepreneur. But I think there's the other side of uh, being an entrepreneur. It's say it has its highs, it has its lows. It's important to have uh, somebody who supports you, to have a partner, to have a girlfriend, to have a a wife uh, that is able to help you along the journey to have family and friends that's able to you know um, listen to you when you complain a lot yeah well, I'm gonna just sidetrack a little bit sure. how do you manage like uh, obviously I'm guessing you're a very busy guy especially when you were trying to do both businesses how do you manage your work-life balance uh, today or back then back then right um, I was young and there wasn't any so um, I can't do that anymore. Um, time really catches up to you, you know, like um, I used to have the ability to work all the way until 2 or 3 a.m. and go to my day job in the morning and uh, I, I'll be able to do like 10 hours, you know, in the evening, um, coming back home early, you know, getting up early and do lots of work during the day and still have a day job. But I can't do that anymore. So. Uh, it's 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 important to have a you know work life balance. Otherwise, I think you go pretty crazy pretty soon. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Um, so, you was this MMGN we're talking about that you were building, or was it something? Was there a failure along the way that we don't know about? Or? Um, it is MMGN. It's in its very early um, version, yeah. I, I would say, and uh, yeah. So you, okay, so you you started. Uh, making some money with MMGN. Sorry, uh, you left Telstra, pursued it full time. How does the story un unravel after that? Um, so one of the ways uh, I think it was um, from the very start was um, to use the technologies that we have developed for other businesses. So we specialize in building online communities. Um, MMGN is a, a petri dish. It's an experiment for us to continuously innovating and iterating uh, on. And uh, to this day, it's a great place for us to showcase what we have done. So um, when, when I just started and left my corporate job, I uh, joined an internet startup. I was trying to negotiate with the manager at the time that, uh, to do part time. and. Um, um, yeah, um, I, so, so I, I found out a lot of things that I shouldn't do as an internet startup from that business. You know, it burned a lot of cash really quickly. It had a lot of people. So uh, I learned a lot of valuable lessons from there. And uh, I left that business to pursue a business of my own, which is, uh, you know, sort of doing something on the side. Um, I, I, I'm coming back to uh, me being an engineer. I love to geek out. You know, like uh, be in the room and uh, play around with cool new technology and seeing what that new technology can do for you know the people out there. So I took this technology, built a online community for uh, gamers to talk about games. Um, it, so uh, gamers can play games with other people, can read latest in games and things like that. And uh, we took this technology and uh, sold it to uh, Census. And it, that was the very first project that we built. It was to uh, use the same platform to create conversations around uh, people who are interested in cars, you know, um, uh, modifying the muffler, changing the engine, and things These like that. These were very successful. Like the, the white label that you did was very successful. Uh, yeah. Um, we found people, everybody, literally, is passionate about something. Uh, as long as you provide them with a platform to uh, vocalize, to amplify their passion, 
um, the the traffic, the people, the community will follow. So how passionate are the people of Australia Post? Uh, <laughs> people are passionate about collecting stats. Yeah. Right, and and you see huge conventions where people I, I don't know why. Um, um, People collect, showcase their stamps and coins and things like that. It's pretty cool, you know. It, and and I'm happy for people who are passionate about things. Well, I just I just saw that on the list. So there was yeah. so there was so literally these these clients who literally took your software and just ran with it for their own business. The no, like, so Nova was another one. Is that right? That the, the paid the white label your yeah. So yeah. we built all of the DMG radio stations. Uh, uh, Nova being one of them. Yeah. All right. So oh, there's a few of them. Uh, there's quite a few, and it was uh, quite a challenge to connect all the sites to unify the authentication and all that technical stuff that I want to get into. Okay, well, let's let's so let's, let's talk about uh, MMGN, like the, the gaming side of things specifically, because uh, I know like everyone, you know, when I when I talk to people that are oh, you know you're an expert in building communities, I don't think there's a single startup that doesn't need to build a community, right? Right. So what are like first of all. Uh, what are some of the principles that you use to build your community and build MMGN up? It is not, you know, not too, um, they can or cannot be specific to gaming. And then, um, um, you know, what are some of those things that, you know, anyone could use here for their business? Right, so uh, we started quite a long time ago, 2006, and uh, back then, web was very one way. It was, you know, publishing, it was, you know, there wasn't a way for you to communicate back to the business. So we sort of created this thing where people can talk amongst each other and can, you know, create user generated content, creating blogs, uploading pictures, and things like that. And, uh, you know, early, a couple of years later, Tim O'Reilly came back and said, you know, this is the Web 2.0 revolution. And it was really cool to know that we're doing Web 2.0 things. So we, we had, we we're doing things um, around communities around user generated content before there was a name for it. And now we take that as the norm because we take you know, Facebook, we take so, uh, Twitter and Instagram all as the way that we communicate day to day. And um, uh, every business, like Chris said, uh, needs to have uh, build a community, uh, have a voice, being able to talk to their customers and things like that. So one of the most important things uh, that we've found along the way is to shape its culture. Um, we, we uh, as a business, pay a lot of attention to culture. We have systems and technology and processes that we uh, implement to improve the culture, not internally, but also online. So uh, to give you an example, I upload a photo of this new video game special edition uh, thing that I bought. You know, it has this figurine with the guy with the sword and the tin box and all that. And other people come in and go, wow, this is a fantastic photo, I upload it, I like it, I add a comment. So for every interaction, we give you a uh, point. Um, so I upload a photo, I get five points, somebody liked my photo, I get one point, somebody can't make a comment on the photo, I get two points, and essentially you're rewarded for um, you know, your uh, behavior online and your contribution to the community. And in turn, you create more content and that's indexable, that can be found through Google and, and it's shareable and things like that. So where does the uh, culture come in? So if I upload a photo of my, um, of something that other people don't want to see, um, and the community tags it to be, you know, as spam, as inappropriate, you actually get deducted more points than you would if you uploaded a nice photo. So um, a photo gets you five points, a bad photo gets you negative 10 points. So as you progress through the, you know, uh, uh, the community and gaining more points for the contributions that you made, um, the higher the points that you have, um, everybody wants to get more points, right? Um, you, uh, you, you have positive contributions to the community. And then we take those leaders, um, who are the top 10% of the community uh, 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 displayed by their, uh, by their points. And we uh, give them an extra level of the community which we can communicate with them directly. And we instill our culture, which is, you know, be open, be happy, be friendly, you know, be all the things that uh, is, you know, relevant for your business. So what's happening, uh, what's relevant for gaming might not be what's relevant for your business. So. Uh, so being able to communicate with the community leaders who in turn, um, um, I, I guess, um, 
influence the rest of the community through their behavior of uh, influencing, uh, in having a positive culture, it has been very beneficial for us. Right, so it's kind of like setting up the rules for the, the community to kind of, uh, you know, forge their own way, I guess. Right, uh, opposite to 4chan. Yeah. Right. All right, and then is, is, there, is there ways that you as a business can set up metrics around culture? Just out of curiosity. Uh, so we, as in uh, business providing a solution to other businesses, or business internally? Uh, I guess just to say, say like, uh, if someone was to say like, a, you can go out and approach a, t a particular advertising client because like, this work, this is our, our community, this is, this is perfect for them. Yeah, uh, we're talking about a food community today, um, and it's with a larger business with a particular brand in mind and uh, it's important to um, have a positive message and uh, to have you know interesting content that people will come back for so uh, we will implement the same technology in terms of adding gamification adding, uh, adding the ability to level up and like achievements and things like that to reward positive behavior and in turn creating a positive uh, message and uh, in turn creating return investment for the uh, brand that we work with. So it sounds like you guys like were kind of like pioneers in um, uh, creating, letting the you know, community create a conversation and then on top of that it sounds like you're almost one of the front runners with gamification, what we call gamification now as well, just from trying to encourage the community to um, Right. Be more engaged. Right. Um, we, we've spent a lot of time thinking about this, and uh, we see a lot of businesses out there rewarding for the sake of rewarding, and I personally, I disagree with that. I don't think you rewarding because you, uh, you've posted 10 messages, or uploaded five photos, is a, a sustainable, interesting thing to, uh, to do long term, because you, know, you unlock something for 10 posts, and you unlock something for 100 posts, um, it doesn't really give you that much incentive to do the next level. So um, we, and gamification in the industry, I guess, has a, has a little bit of a negative uh, spin to it. So we like to call it, you know, motivations. And um, we would like to uh, echo with, you know, the uh, motivations uh, that's uh, valuable to the, to the user of the system. So in the gaming uh, world, uh, gamers come to our site for a reason. You know, they might land there because they were searching for the latest game, but they, uh, they interact with us and stay with us because they are, um, you know, they, they want to see companionship. They want to uh, have that feel of camaraderie. They, they want to be validated for the things that they do, uh, the purchases that they've made. So we provide incentives and motivations around the things that's valuable for those users. So um, I, I don't uh, want to reward and provide you know, achievements for the sake of achievements. Sure. Um, the MG, MMGN is very successful in the fact that you've got something uh, over a couple of million users, right? Active users and all that. Can you talk a little bit about um, the growth uh, and, and getting there and you know, like, you know, you just did it, did it grow organically? We, you know, how how pumped were you to see you know your first hundred people in your community, and how did it just grow? Like, you know, how, what what do you use to help it grow? If there was any some tips that people could take away. Right. Um, I I was uh, talking about this just now, and I I I think the landscape of internet has changed quite a lot. Um, comparing to when I started. Uh, back then it was all about organic search engine optimization, it was about uh, creating the latest content, uh, content quickest out the door. And uh, that certainly is applicable today, but the way that you acquire new users has changed a lot. So um, we, we had awesome domain names back then. Um, now I, uh, we, we came up with mmgen.com, but um, back then we had uh, the actual consoles in the domain name, so mywe.com.au. Um, my PS4.com that year, my 360.com that year, etc., etc., and and uh, that played a lot in search engine optimization and seeing you know the initial uh, thousand thousand people coming to the site and participating was really exciting because it, it's not you know uh, the article gets viewed a thousand times it's a thousand people interacting with a thousand people at the same time so it's a thousand times a thousand and seeing that 
uh, happen day after day, people coming back, you know, uh, every five hours and being able to check messages and uh, talk to other uh, gamers is uh, certainly, you know, awesome. And um, now if uh, when we work with clients in terms of acquiring customers, it's an entirely different uh, model because uh, we have fantastic platforms like Facebook, like Twitter for us to take advantage of. And uh, when, for example, a gamer creates a conversation in terms of uh, how to uh, do X, that conversation is also shared on Facebook and therefore your immediate friends uh, can see that conversation and participate in that conversation. So uh, acquiring customers was um, really interesting and it was all uh, about SEO. And we raised some capital about a year and a half ago to experiment uh, the different ways that we can acquire customers through advertising and through other methods. And uh, we still found organic traffic works the best um, and the users retain uh, the longest. And uh, that's still one of our um, uh, most effective ways of acquiring new customers. Um, but uh, yeah, new, new business are well, very different. Well, if, um, so it seems to me like a lot of the guys that are up here that are very successful have built a business around doing what they love. So you love video gaming, you started this website. When did you go, hang on, I need to make some money out of this piece of bills? And, and what, what was, yeah, how were you making money? Right, um, I, I wouldn't call myself successful, um, but uh, hopefully I can share some things that I, I learned along the way and therefore you will not make the same mistakes that I have. Um, so, uh, as I said before, we started selling our platform on day one. So, uh, and throughout the journey, we identified the businesses that we can help with. Sorry, so aside from the, the white label stuff, the MMGN in itself, so are you still doing the white label stuff? Yeah, 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 yeah we are. Uh, but MMGN in itself. All right, okay, as a, as a gaming media business, yeah. we're still trying to figure that out. Okay. Uh, believe it or not. Uh, so we keep on trying new things and see what works. And um, uh, today, the uh, single biggest source of revenue is advertising. Uh, it's a really simple thing to do. Um, you know, uh, find a good advertising representation, have the right deals, have the right structures, have the right audience, and um, you know, you create you know, revenue through advertising. So we kept on thinking. Uh, what's the next thing that we can do on top of advertising because uh, there's only so many people that will visit your site. So we thought about selling games, we thought about creating a marketplace for gamers to buy, sell, trade games amongst each other. We thought about creating a subscription-based business, we thought about uh, selling virtual goods um, and, and lots of different stuff. We're still trying to figure that out. So does the, does the, the you know, the, if you're still servicing the Novas and the Australia Post of the world, does that get a bit frustrating because you still want, you don't want to, you know, you know that you need that to pay the bills, but you want to, you know, focus on, you know, MMGN and growing the gaming side of things? Uh, yes. Um, so, uh, it, it certainly has its challenges, um, and uh, I, I think the, the correct answer to say is we've implemented a lot of you know, processes in place so, and technologies in place so this gaming media business can be automated, can, uh, it's repeated and uh, it requires a very little effort to run. And a lot of innovation goes into the business in terms of improving the business and doing cool new things which we can sell to potential clients. But uh, it, it, nothing works like that, you know, nothing works perfectly as you plan to be. So yes, there are challenges, and um, uh, you just have to learn on prioritizing. So you use, you use MMGN as like a research and development department almost for you know, doing a better job with your clients. Yeah, exactly, and uh, we can say uh, the uh, button being on the left works better than the button being on the right. Uh, this form being green rather than being red works better because of, you know, millions of iterations, um, millions of page impressions. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to open it up to the audience now for a few questions. Um, I think I covered it. I think I'm doing okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. Have anyone got some questions? Hi, over there. So what was the biggest challenge from going from corporate life into your own startup? Was it about your the risk, the biggest risk from the corporate life to start up, um, to have that certainty in income, uh, to have um, 
a very defined way uh, task that you should be accomplishing. Um, I think there are the key differences. Uh, as a startup, you have to do everything. You know, um, I have to do the accounts, you do the taxes, I do the advertising selling, um, and and people leave businesses because you think you can be your own boss. But everybody becomes your boss when you run your own business. You know, you have clients, they're your boss. You know, you have investors, they're your boss. You have users that you have to answer to, and they're your boss. So, essentially, um, it, it's very different, and you just have to learn. Uh, I, I've learned so much over the years, and I wouldn't have otherwise if I was in the corporate world. Can can I go into the? Uh, I know that now that you know you've been doing the MMGN, you're very um, active in the startup community, not only in Melbourne and, but in Sydney. I know that you mentor a lot of the uh, accelerators. So you, you mentor at Startmate and AngelCube. Is that correct? Uh, I, I'm listed as a uh, mentor at um, AngelCube. Um, and I've spoken to some mentors at uh, Startmate, um, but yeah, like I, when when I started um, uh, going on, uh, on on this journey uh, back in 2006, there was nothing like this around. You know, um, I had a technical problem, I had a business problem. Uh, there was not, no one for me to talk to, and. Um, over the years, um, I uh, tried to acquire information from all these different uh, sources, you know, podcasts from, you know, Stanford courses from uh, places around the world, and uh, there was uh, there wasn't any, you know, uh, entrepreneurial supporting group or you know meetups here in Melbourne. So I actually took the initiative of starting Silicon Beach. That's right. Yes, yeah, so you, you started. So that, so anyone been to the Silicon Beach drinks? Yeah. Yeah. Ollie runs it. Uh, well, he did until he. Got booted out of the country. <laughs> yeah. That's right. But there was, there was you started that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, I, I thought, you know, um, I personally I found a lot of success when I talked to other people. Um, so whether if it's making a deal or finding, you know, mutually beneficial opportunities, going, being out there and talking to people made a lot of difference for me. So I thought, you know, why don't a bunch of tech startups uh, sit around together and drink beer? You know, things will happen. And uh, through that, um, uh, I spoke to the Silicon Beach organizers in Sydney. I think that was one of the first um, startup uh, community gatherings. And uh, I got OK from uh, the guys in Sydney to do a local version of it. And I found out later on uh, there has been few attempts of doing Silicon Beach in Melbourne. Uh, it's just it didn't really take off. And uh, I started up. I started the uh, Silicon Beach Melbourne that it, you see today, so um, and and it's good. It's a uh, it's a way to bring people together to drink beer and talk to talk things. And uh, it and I think in turn we see a lot of uh, meetups. Um, and I think it has its influence and impact, and therefore we see, you know, uh, incubators and uh, funds and uh, meetups. Uh, there is an event every other day like this one. It's great, you know. Yeah, I think it's, well. It's very exciting when you know I see some people that have come here and say, look, I met a co-founder. We, you know, we, we're working on a project together. So yeah, it must have been over. You know, the years that you've done Silicon Beach, so you've had some, you know, tremendous stories like that. You know. Um, yeah, we we had all these tequila shots lined up, and you know. Um, <laughs> So uh, I, I think Silicon Beach was, uh, is fantastic for you to meet new people and I guess it's my own way to meet the people that I want to meet and I'll be like, hey, 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 um, VC over there or um, potential uh, fund over here, come to this fantastic gathering and uh, you will meet all kinds of uh, interesting entrepreneurs. And That's what I'm doing right here, man. <laughs> I just ask everyone I want to ask the questions to, I just invite them along. Right, right. And Ollie was saying the uh, other day, um, one of the ways to be successful is just be simply, just be there, right? Show up. And uh, to not only attend this event or, you know, starting up your own event, it's, it's a great way to make a positive impact. Well, you just don't know who you're sitting next to and you don't know, like, that's why I hope that people get out of this, you know, tonight that, you know, you don't have to, it's not just about trading business cards, you know, it's like people, we can help, we can literally help each other and, and helping each other helps Melbourne, helps, you know, the community, so. Right. I open up a couple more questions here. Yeah. Well, not sure if it is a good question. Uh, There's no such thing as bad questions. Yeah. yeah, let's say if you are not yourself anymore, but another new guy start a startup company, 
So do you think you can beat your existing community if you set up a similar one? Why well, ask this question is because I want, want to know if uh, startups now have a chance to set up a successful community. Uh, to set up a successful business or set up a successful community? Well, let's say a community is focusing on the game. All oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Existing one. Sure, sure, sure. I um. I, I, I'm not running it. That, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk to you afterwards. <laughs> but um, um, we we see challenges like that all the time, and we we wouldn't we're not comfortable with where we are. We always iterate. We always innovate. And I was telling a couple of guys before we rebuild our business from ground up, uh, from uh, rebuild our technology from ground up every year. We didn't do it last year because we, we had a few, but anyway. Um, so it's, it's important to innovate, to look at the changes in the world, be able to adapt to those changes in the world. And yeah, like I, I turn around and look at who's behind me all the time, maybe I can borrow some ideas from them. So, um, so uh, to answer your question, I, I think there's definitely a chance for uh, someone to create an awesome gaming, um, I, I'm not sure if community is the right way for it because um, there are so many ways for gamers to interact, for them to play games together. Uh, on the business card, um, I have uh, learn, play, and connect because um, uh, that's what essentially we were about. Uh, so instead of connect, I had make friends, you know, uh, because you know, uh, learn, play, and make friends is pretty cool, and that's what we do. And my, one of my employees actually said that's pretty creepy, you know, uh, to put make friends on the back of the business card. So, so yeah, it's it's important to uh, you know uh, do um, create I think uh, communities for people to gather around to have this different experiences, and we're not comfortable with where we are. We keep on innovating. We keep on doing things that will uh, give us the competitive edge. But sure, there there's always opportunity for entrepreneurs to give it a um, to give it a go. And I would love to uh, work with them and connect with them and make friends. <laughs> Take Hi, over there. Uh, Harry? Uh, sure. Everybody knows that the Facebook is uh, massive, it's huge. Uh, that's in terms of community, in the sense of community. My question is, in terms of technology, do you think it's complicated to build a website which has the function of uh, Facebook? Uh, could, could you repeat the question? Okay. Uh, would it be complicated to do, uh, incorporate uh, the function of Facebook? I mean, technologically, do you think it's complicated to, uh, to have uh, the function, function of Facebook? Sure. Um, there's quite a bit of an overlap between what we do and what Facebook does. Uh, so we create social networks by connecting people with each other. We provide them with the ability to upload photos and things like that. It's just a little bit different in terms of Facebook is a social network amongst your friends. We are a community and the social network amongst you know, gamers is very public. So uh, technology, I think what makes Facebook successful, technology certainly is a big part, uh, but it's also you know, so many other things that they do. We, um, that's outside of technology uh, made them successful as you know they are. I mean, everybody's seen the uh, Facebook movie, and I'm sure you know uh, you've taken away uh, the deals that they've done, uh, being the right place, at the right time, uh, going to different ca uh, campuses, you know, in college towns in uh, America to uh, to uh, to spread uh, their technology and their uh, websites. Certainly made a lot of difference. So uh, it's easy to emulate. Technology, and I think you can go to scriptlands or elance.com and buy, you know, uh, Facebook clones for like a couple of hundred bucks. You know, I think there's a clone for every single large technology out there: Fiverr, Instagram, and YouTube. You can get lots of, you know, clone software, but it's not the software and technology. I think that that's uh, who the business that we've built today. Yeah, uh, can I ask you, uh, for, for some of, um, just uh, ordinary website uh, developers? Uh, Sure. 
Sure. Um, I think the barrier to entry in terms of building a new product has certainly been lower than it has been ever. Uh, you can do a lot with so many things out there. Uh, take Squarespace, take Wix, take you know uh, all the free stuff out there. You you can just you know put together a couple of simple pages to emulate the functionality of a social network over a weekend, and you don't even need to have a master degree in some really you know sophisticated uh, discipline to uh, to have that ability. So the technology is certainly out there, and it's really easy to do, um, but. What is it that you're building? Who is the forward problem you're trying to solve? And I think those are larger questions. Thanks very much. Yeah. Uh, my question, uh, have you ever actually used help of investors and if you actually have uh, how did you find it? Uh, so talking about my investors and how uh, the amount of help that they've provided, um, it took me quite a while to uh, raise capital and the reason was I want to attract the right investors that's going to be beneficial for the business. So uh, a couple of uh, investors, I think every single one of them has definitely contributed a lot to where we are today. And uh, so having, so from a credibility perspective to say that um, we're backed by you know, the founders of 99design and Sidepoint, uh, the uh, founders of Hitwise and um, and it certainly adds to your credibility and uh, to have um, a, a investor who is well connected and has a fantastic network to uh, have the ability to open doors for you and introduce you to the right people to you know, uh, do something, it's certainly been very valuable as well. So take an example, uh, we, we uh, run a non-MSN's uh, uh, gaming uh, uh, destination, we also run MSN New Zealand's gaming destination, and that was through an introduction that one of our investors uh, made to the head of products at 9 at the time. So yeah, it's, it's been quite beneficial. I'll take one last question. Um, <clears throat> can you give some examples of where well-established businesses have, from what I understand, a lot of your clients have turned around and realized <clears throat> the power of community and communication. Can you give some examples of where businesses have gone and turned around and realized that this is a, an important element that they need to acquire into what they do? Uh, sure. <clears throat> um, I wouldn't give any specific examples, sure. um, right? General, um, general, of course. general examples. So uh, over the past, I think, three years ish, um, marketing companies of larger businesses uh, um, understood that it's very valuable to be on Facebook, to be on Twitter, to be on Instagram, and therefore you acquire a lot of uh, fans on your Facebook page. Uh, now, one of the issues is you cannot, uh, that's Facebook and it's great that uh, it's this way because Facebook can make money uh, through, through this um, uh, technology. Um, so one of the challenges is there's no way for you to communicate directly with your fans. Um, and you have to pay for every single post if you want every single one of your posts to reach 100% of your fans. It's a fantastic business model, uh, but for marketing department to be able to reach all of your fans which you've invested and acquired uh, is very difficult. And uh, it's very hard to shake culture, to do anything bespoke, to introduce the things that's making your brand special. So. Um, Initially, we've had a lot of success because there wasn't Facebook, there wasn't a way for you to communicate, and then Facebook came along, we see a lot of uh, marketing and uh, PR jumping onto Facebook, but now we're seeing a huge uh, demand for uh, creating conversations and creating bespoke communities uh, because they're finding challenges with Facebook and uh, accessing users and creating bespoke experiences. Yeah, this was because uh, originally Facebook, when you po posted something on your Facebook fan page, some, everyone in the fan page used to get the message, right? But now right. it's not the case. People still think that, oh, when I put something on Facebook, it goes to everyone, but it doesn't. If, I think if you run a business on Facebook using Facebook uh, groups, uh, using Facebook pages, it's pretty clear uh, there's a button to say, uh, increase the reach of your Facebook post, yeah. that you have to pay extra like $200 or $500, depending on your audience size. And it's a great way to create extra revenue. For Facebook, yeah. For Facebook, yeah. All right, I want everyone, everyone back on their feet. We're going to thank Roy here very much for uh, coming along to start up tonight. Thank you, guys. Thank you.